What is up, guys? This is the big one. The one we've been waiting for for a very long time. The Italian Grand Prix. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is another episode of the F1 2090 Career Mode Championship. Season number three, Italian Grand Prix. You already know that from the title of the video. So, heading into this one, we finally have the ultimate drag... Ultimate downforce upgrade on the front of the car, so um, it should hopefully help in getting the car through the corners a little bit more. We don't have the rear downforce upgrade that we're looking for to really support that, so we may potentially have an unbalanced, uh, unbalanced um, package this weekend, but I'm going to make sure I counteract that by making sure that the rear downforce is higher naturally than the front, and we should be okay, hopefully. There's not too many corners I can really throw the car around all too much anyway, so it should be alright on that front, but pace is fine. Uh, I think we were up by six tenths over the nearest competitor in practice too. I know that it's going to be a good weekend if we're, you know, competitive in practice. Um, even if we're not sometimes, that's fine because, yeah, um, you can always find a little bit more time with engine modes and with fresher engines, but... Um, the pace is right there from the outset, so that is encouraging to see. Heading into qualifying, though, we're going to chuck in um, some near-new components for the engine. I think we're going to go for um, the engine components we ran in Belgium in an effort to, uh, yeah, just find a little bit more pace. And uh, we'll save maybe the freshest components for later on in the season. We'll see how qualifying goes and if the pace is there, but... Um, early doors means I think we can get away with running a slightly older engine for Quali. We'll see. Practice is all wrapped up as we move into qualifying here at the Autodromo di Monza for the Italian Grand Prix. Any moment now, the teams will be heading out onto the track. But yes, with all of those formal introductions out of the way, we certainly want to win this Grand Prix, or at least that's what I've been building towards um, after the fantastic episode we had last time out in Belgium. Go check that one out if you haven't already. Uh, we negotiate qualifying one. We are the fastest car once again, so that is really encouraging to see. it. 116.1 gives us good momentum heading into the rest of the qualifying sessions. However, the AI, I feel like, may switch up the engine modes for Q2 and Q3. They do it in real life, so it's entirely possible that they will do it uh, in the game as well, but yeah, we'll see on that front. We move on to Q2. And we're using a used set of softs, but Valtteri Bottas is completely balking our lap. And uh, that's the first run kind of out the window. We press on to finish the lap, and it's a 17-1. So it's a, I think it's a second slower than what we managed in qualifying one. We're going to press on again for another lap, still on the same set of used tires. These uh, softs will be screaming for mercy at this point. They've done a lot of running um, in qualifying, but we... Do a somewhat competitive lap. It's a 116.6, uh, but we still need to, uh, yeah, chuck on a fresh set of softs and then see what our representative pace is up against the AI in this session. And uh, as you can see there, the AI have stepped it up massively. That's a 15.3 from Lewis Hamilton. I don't really understand how an extra engine mode can give you that much performance, but if, if there is going to be a place where it works out, it's going to be Monza, the Italian Grand Prix. Um, I was being told over practice that I was the fastest car on the speed traps, topping out at like 360 odd kilometers an hour, which is pretty darn insane. We have still stuck with our low downforce mantra, but I, I'm starting to question it now as we come to the end of Q2. Um, maybe I haven't got enough downforce on this car, um, because I am struggling a little bit through the corners, like Parabolica isn't the strongest for us. And then the two Lesmos, not too strong either. But everywhere else, you don't really need too much downforce. So, I don't know, we'll see. Even if we're not, you know, overly competitive in qualifying, we should be pretty beastly in the, in the race where, um, you know, top end speed isn't so abundant and you have to, um, yeah, it, it definitely makes a big difference having a, a low downforce setup in the race as opposed to qualifying. But uh, so far, the pace, again, it seems like we're struggling for it a little bit. We were dominating the start of the weekend and even the start of qualifying one, but we move on to Q2 and Q3 where the AI have quite clearly stepped it up. We um, are unable to uh, match it with them at the moment. We've only done a 16-1 so far as our opening lap in Q3, which matches Q1. Uh, but we need to find, I don't know, half a 
second, probably more, in order to really mix it with our teammate, who is actually on provisional pole position at the moment. He's done a 15-6, so half a second, and we're right up there with our teammate on the front row of the grid. How good would that be to see two Ferraris on the front row of the grid? Uh, Kimi, though, has actually uh, opted not to go out again for his final run. He's actually in the pit lane, as you can see there, but now we're seeing a, a rapid improvement from uh, the top field guys. Both the Alphas uh, st you know, move into pole position respectively, but Hamilton best his teammate there, so it looks like he'll have provisional pole. For us, though, we're going to see if we can knock on the door of those guys. We're five tenths up on our previous best, but I don't think it's going to be enough to get pole position today, and it is only P5. So, we put in our PB of the entire weekend, but we fall just short of Kimi Raikkonen. So, uh, you can see right there where there's literally nothing to separate us on pace. Maybe Kimi uh, would have the edge if uh, you consider that he set his lap earlier on in the session. So heading into the race, it's going to be a very closely contested battle here at Ferrari. And also at the front of the grid, because I feel like we should be uh, a bit stronger in the race, given our tyre wear, uh, our tyre uh, tire conservation uh, this car has. So... Uh, I'm not going to rule us out just yet, but it is a little bit ominous. I was hoping that we'd be a little bit more pacey uh, like we were in the Belgian Grand Prix. We got on the front row in that race. Uh, but here, I would have actually thought we'd be stronger here because this is the ideal circuit for us that plays into our strengths. But it doesn't look like it is falling that way for us in this weekend. But um, I did allude to this earlier. I didn't chuck in the absolute freshest components for the engine. And uh, I'm slightly regretting that. But we're going to rectify that now and chuck in the absolute best power meter components we have in our bank. And we're going to hope that that is enough leverage for us to get in the fight for the win of the Italian Grand Prix. Let's get it. It's race day here in Italy once again. Monza, home to so many records. The smallest winning margin, for example. Do you remember in 1971, Peter Gethin beat Ronnie Peterson to the line by one hundredth of a second. There were 40 overtakes for the lead alone in 1965, and Kimi Raikkonen clocked a record top speed of 230 miles per hour here, just over a decade ago. So there's a lot to live up to then for all of our drivers today. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Day. What do you make of their performance so far this season? It's been a really solid year so far. There have been some incredible standout performances, but what's really impressed me has been the consistency. With this kind of form, I'm expecting another great race today. OK, this is the team's home race. We're all relying on you to impress today. Yes, not only the pressure of the team, but for, for me, the pressure of the whole of Italy, I suppose, falling on myself and Raikkonen's shoulders. Welcome to the Italian Grand Prix. We are geared for an absolute classic here today. I feel like we have amazing race pace, but we've got five other cars or four other cars to uh, climb over in order to get on that top step of the podium. The lights are building. Five red lights. And away we go for the Italian Grand Prix for the third time in my F1 2019 career mode. It has been an absolute shocker. We get jumped by Verstappen, by Perez, by Vettel. Anyone else want to take a pot shot at us heading into turn one? Didn't think so. Side by side with uh, our Haas rival. And we best him at the second part of the first chicane. And we move ourselves back up into P7. So it's not been the ideal start. We've lost a lot of track position. And hopefully we can quickly claw that back with our amazing top end speed. Verstappen and Perez fighting away. This could be a three wide affair for all three of us as we head into the first of the th two Lesmos. We've clouded Sebastian Vettel, I think. I didn't even realize he was on my outside there. Uh, we'll have to check the replay to see if there's any damage for his uh, front wing. But um, yeah, a bit of a messy start for us so far. Yeah, I've just... Oh my goodness. I mean, honestly, I'm going to hit someone. I think I have a puncture. Tires are fine. Tires are fine. My... Wow, okay, I, I had no idea. He was on my outside. I was swinging back to the left in order to have a nice flowing run through the high-speed right-hander. And I, yeah, I had absolutely no no idea that Vettel was there. But it looks like, uh, from when I checked his front wing, it looks intact, which is somewhat of a miracle because we are running on simulation damage, but that Haas is somewhat built like a tank. Gotta remember that 
two seasons ago, they, they were housing Kevin Magnuson and Roman Grosjean in their stable, so they had to, to make them tough, I suppose, to uh, you know make sure they withstand those drivers piloting them. But anyway, we're finding a way with Sergio and uh, Max here on the uh, back straight, and uh, looks like we're just going to get the ascendancy as we run into Parabolica for the first time, but there's a, a huge air gap that's now emerged after all that squabbling here on this first lap. Raikkonen is a good two or three seconds up the road already, and we've lost DRS. We've lost Sipstream to that lead pack, which is absolutely crucial um, when you consider that we don't exactly have the pace of the front-running guys in this Italian Grand Prix. So now we need to get our head down and try and romp towards them once again in order to be a chance of winning this race. But, um, yeah, it's going to be tough. We're, we're almost going to have to hope that uh, the leaders all start squabbling in a massive uh, slipstream and DRS train uh, because they, they can squabble a lot into, you know, corners, heavy braking zones and stuff. Uh, when they start to do that, they can lose maybe seconds per lap uh, if it gets bad enough. But um, being the early stage of the race like it is, I, I don't imagine that things are going to get too frisky at this stage. I think they'll all be uh, cooperating, or at least you would hope that they would be um, in an effort to pull away from the rest of the field. But we'll see. Um, how it all plays out. There will be a bit of squabbling between the two alpha guys as they look for ascendancy over each other. Here goes, uh, who's that? Luke, Mar uh, not Marcus, Lucas Weber uh, up the inside into turn one. A bit of contact as well made at the apex of the first chicane. And Lucas slides on through for the lead of the Grand Prix. Jimmy is ahead of me. Gap to car in front is 4.4 seconds. They're on old softs. Their tyres are three laps old. We think they've got one more stop. The time last lap was a 118.5. You're losing around three tenths a lap. Oh, damn. And, and despite the battling up front uh, and us being in clear air, we are still losing time to our teammates. So that is really alarming signs. Uh, at this stage of the Italian Grand Prix. Tyres are not overheating. Engine isn't overheating. But I tell you what, the driver in the cockpit is certainly overheating with the frustration knowing that we don't have the pace to win this race. Here comes Verstappen really late under brakes into the first corner. Maybe that's a factor as well. The fact that we still have a couple of brake upgrades to do. The fact that we're going so ridiculously fast on the straights. We have maybe much longer braking zones than some of our rivals around us. Uh, you saw Verstappen was able to break, I don't know, a good 20 meters later than what I could, and that's 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 incredible performance you are squeezing out of as a little tiny brake package in this Formula One car. So yeah, that's something we're gonna have to target in the future, but we are lacking outright downforce. We'll see how it compares up against the Red Bulls. We go through Parabolica. The understeer we get through there is, is not great. And it puts us under pressure from Sebastian Vettel. So now we're having to contest with the dirty air as well as the lack of downforce we are showing at the moment. Let's see if we can bravely outbreak Max Verstappen. Even though he had the inside for the corner. Normally if you have the inside for a corner, you have to break earlier. Verstappen was still able to break a good 5, 10 meters later than what I could. Which is frightening performance that they are getting out of their cars. That This is a trade of my career mode cars. I, I often neglect the braking elements, which is a very important facet of car performance. Um, it, it is certainly being exposed today uh, in this Grand Prix. Look at that wash away of the front end. Just dirty air, just caught behind uh, the back of Max Verstappen's wing. And uh, we've just got no performance. We've got no drive heading onto the Parabolica or the start finish straight, sorry. And uh, it makes life very difficult when it comes to overtaking on the start finish straight. So, uh, yeah, a lot of problems now coming to the surface now in this uh, Italian Grand Prix. We've now got Sebastian Vettel looking pretty racy at this stage as well. So, um, yeah, it, it's not good. I actually feel like in a slip frame of a staff, we're actually losing time because he is slower than us in a straight line. You can see that. Oh, no, he's retiring. That isn't slow performance from the Honda. That is a genuine retirement. Max Verstappen is out of the Italian Grand Prix. And I've got to say, that's going to be a bit of a blessing for us because we were literally trapped behind Verstappen. I couldn't get close to him in the corners to uh, put some pressure on him. And then the straights, I'll be as, as, as long as they are, they weren't long enough for me to actually outbreak him. I didn't have the braking performance to outbreak him as well. So I was literally stuck. This is a very unique problem that I'm having at the moment in this Italian Grand Prix 
Uh, we're just not fast in the areas that matter. And here goes Sebastian up the inside into the Scari. That was uh, an interesting choice. But we managed to get through there cleanly. I'm going to let Vettel go through here. Because I know that the Haas is actually a faster package than what the Ferrari can offer up. It's just such a, such a depressing thought. Just having to give up a position in order to hopefully give us a chance of moving forward in this Grand Prix. But um, yeah, it was getting to a point where Vettel was attacking me into a lot of breaking zones. I was having to run side by side. It was not good for our race. So I'm letting him go in the hope that we can pick up some performance and start closing into uh, the other half of Nico Hülkenberg and Kimi Raikkonen up ahead. Meanwhile, right at the front, Lucas Weber is pulling out a five second gap at the moment over Hamilton. Only one stop to go. One stop left in this strategy. Your good window opens next lap. Jeff, what did I say about talking in the corners? I, I, even though I activated the radio message, I'm just going to blame you for that anyway. Side by side with Vettel uh, into turn one. Uh, in the end, didn't have the braking performance to really pull that off. So uh, if we want to get the move done, we'll have to get it done before the braking zone uh, in order to make it stick. Lap 11 here, we're a lot closer this time around. A much better exit out of Parabolica. And now we go back into the top five. Hopefully Vettel doesn't lunge us, which is entirely possible. But no, we have made it through and we are back into the top five. You can see the cars up ahead are actually running quite slowly at the moment. That is Hamilton, Raikkonen and... Hulkenberg, they're all starting to squabble quite a bit. Uh, they were a good five seconds up the road. You can see we're now starting to make those inroads now quite comprehensively. Going defensive on Vettel. Into the Ascari chicane. He doesn't care about that. Goes for the dive anyway. And that was close. Just about hold on to the position. It's been very feisty racing with Seb today. Uh, the opening lap squabble, uh, clouding his front wing. Managed to survive. Uh, we've been going toing and froing all race, and uh, this is one that is not going to end uh, anytime soon, I would imagine. We're in now for lap 12. I think we got the undercut over our teammate, which was nice from Ferrari to give us that. But uh, now we'll see what we can manage with some fresh tyres, and hopefully we can undercut our way into the battle for P2 in this Italian Grand Prix. Who knows what happens? Who knows what could happen with Lucas Weber up the road? He uh, did retire from this race this time last season. And that was uh, the undoing of his championship in many ways. So today will be all about redemption for Lucas Weber. Um, if fortune is on our side, maybe reliability will strike again. And here we go. Up the inside of George Russell into the Ascari chicane. Don't mind if I do. And uh, now we can set after the leaders without any interruptions, hopefully. 14 laps left in this race. And uh, yeah, we're struggling to catch up to the cars ahead but I've got to say it is coming a little bit more naturally than what it was at the start of the last stint um, you know, the opening laps of the Grand Prix we just had absolutely no pace over those around us but uh, now that these guys are starting to squabble it is slightly inviting us into the fray side by side with Raikkonen and, and Hamilton let's see if uh, Hulkenberg can get involved in some way looks like we're going to get DRS possibly on this lap we do but we are not going to be anywhere near close enough to go for a dive into turn one. Let's see if there's any mistakes coming up here. A lot of people jostling for position as we head into turn one. Everyone is well behaved and uh, they keep their front wings intact. So, yeah, this stage, I think it might be a similar case to earlier on in the Grand Prix when we were following Verstappen. Um, it, it was very hard to make an impact on the cars ahead simply because of the horrible exits I keep getting out of Parabolica. I've just got no, I've got no bite there with the front end. It's not a tire issue. It's not a grip issue. It's literally uh, downforce. I just don't have enough of it on the front end despite having the ultimate front downforce upgrade. There is nothing more I can do to this car upgrade wise. I've just blundered on the, on the setup, I suppose. So uh, heading into Singapore, we'll need to make sure that we don't make that same mistake again. But anyway, into the middle sector. Raikkonen and, and Hulkenberg getting very defensive there. Uh, no positions changed there, but that allows Hamilton to just breathe a, a sigh of relief for half a lap. And now he's under attack once again from Raikkonen as they head into the middle sector chicane. We're trying to get a nice exit there. Weber has just completed a pass for the lead. No, he hasn't. Weber has been leading basically all of his race. Engineer, you are drunk. Go home. But anyway, I tried almost like an under and over move on Hulkenberg into the middle sector chicane. Didn't quite work out for us. 
but if uh, Hamilton and Raikkonen can battle again into that section of the track, we are closer this time, so maybe if we're lucky, we might be able to do something similar um, if luck goes our way. Here we go. Let's uh, pick a line into the middle sector. Chicane Hulkenberg going defensive. Let's see if we can get the inside for the second part, and we do. We're into P4 in this Italian Grand Prix. A very risky move, but we have managed to pull it off. Raikkonen is up next, and uh, i got to say, I think this is just going to have to be the ploy of the race, taking risks in order to get these moves done, because we don't have the performance to really run with these guys. Look at Hulkenberg, the momentum he's getting off the exit of Parabolica. God, I've said Parabolica too many times. Ascari. It uh, made me look behind me as opposed to focus on what was going on in front of me. And again, a really nice exit for Hulkenberg. He's got amazing grip and high speed. That is the strength of the Haas as we nearly run side by side in the time one. Raikkonen steals P2 in this Italian Grand Prix. Let's see if we can get Hamilton uh, the same way that we got Hulkenberg. And there we go, second part of the chicane. A bit of a nudge this time, but we are on the podium for the Italian Grand Prix. It is a Ferrari 2-3 at this stage. I'm starting to lose my voice. But this, again, was a very risky move. Just sticking the nose in there. And uh, if anything, it was the bouncing on the curb which actually sent me into the path of Hamilton. So if not for that big bouncy castle curb, as you'll see here, yeah, it just kind of this wide a little bit into Hamilton's line and pushed him a little bit wide. But I feel like that was that was fair enough. That was that was just about clean. Maybe in some people's interpretations, probably not clean, but um, we didn't completely barge him off the road. Um, we slide up the inside and uh, we're on the podium once again. Here comes Hulkenberg. He's got in front of Hamilton somehow and uh, was putting us under pressure into Ascari. But there we go. That was a bad run for Hulkenberg. And uh, that allowed us to kind of break the slipstream, to break the DRS. And for the rest of the race, um, we were able to, you know, run our own pace for the first time in a while. Um, and while, you know, Hulkenberg kind of lost slipstream and DRS, that put him under a lot of pressure from uh, Hamilton, who was behind. And so, um, yeah, they just kept battling and kept on falling further and further back in the race. But Lucas Weber wins the Italian Grand Prix. He gets redemption one season later after the nightmare that was season two. And uh, he heads into the second half of the championship with a, a very, very handy lead against his name. For us here at Ferrari, it is not going to be the win that we were oh so hoping for. But it will be a double podium. And I hope that the Tafosi are proud. Top job, my friend, top job. I was a bit worried about this one at the start of the weekend, but you pulled through. Thank you. A victory for Alfa Romeo. The team will certainly be celebrating tonight. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, they certainly stood out as a drive with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. So here they come now, out onto the podium. It's thrilling to see this team go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best teams in the sport and come out on top. What a superb victory from the Alfa Romeo team. I don't really know how fast he was, but it was uh, quite a convincing win for Lucas Weber today. A, a runaway victory. Um, got the ascendancy over his teammate and then somehow broke DRS, broke slipstream, and um, he was never seen again. So uh, well done to him. He, he redeems himself after last year's nightmare with the re engine failure, which um, yeah, really put pain to his championship. He would have won it otherwise. Very similar circumstance to Lewis Hamilton in 2016, I think it was. But for us, it was a good recovery. Um, after the first lap, we lost three or four seconds to the lead group of cars, all because of a couple of people squabbling for position. And so, because of that, really, our chances of winning the race were out the window after lap one, which is absolutely mad. Um, that the slipstream and speed means that much um, we were just never in contention which is unfortunate but we were able to make the most of you know the minor placings those guys fighting we were able to get ourselves in that fight we undercut a couple of guys and uh, with a bit of luck with a bit of risk a bit of bravery 
we fought our way onto the podium, literally, um, fists out and all. It was uh, a very interesting race, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, the Italian Grand Prix. I, I really wanted to win it, given that I haven't driven for Ferrari in five years. This is our first chance to impress at Italy, and um, yeah, unfortunately we, we dropped the bag on that one. So we'll have to make amends, who knows, next season. But um, that's, a, that's a long time away. There's a lot to figure out for the rest of this season. We've got the championship to worry about. We've got the regulation change heading into season four. Uh, contract negotiations. Do we want to stay at Ferrari? Can we, can we recover enough of these components to stay competitive next season? That is a huge question mark and something we'll definitely need to consider heading into next season. So, um, yeah, I'd imagine that the, it's, it's a tricky one, you know, because the likes of Alpha and Haas have hit their ceiling, you would say, or at least have the majority of their upgrades all on the car. So that means they have to, they have to consolidate all of these parts before the end of the season. So you would think that they'd be in a good position resource points-wise because they don't need to spend points to continue upgrading. They can just consolidate what they already have. But at the same time, they have to consolidate more than, say, Toro Rosso at the bottom of the field. They may, be, they may not have to consolidate many parts at all. And so... I don't know. I feel like it, it'll be a good level of heading into Season 4, but it's it's really going to be quite ambiguous as to who's going to be on the pace and who won't be um, next season, which, um, yeah, it's really exciting because I, I mean, it's, it's going to be a stab in the dark whether I stay at Ferrari and whether that's going to be a, a masterstroke or do I go to another team and risk maybe falling into the midfield or potentially even shooting to the top. I just don't know. But upgrade-wise, uh, what did we do? I think we did... What did we do? Brakes? No, we didn't do brakes because we got a brake upgrade heading our way next race for Singapore. That's a major one. We did um, uh, drag reduction, which uh, is odd uh, considering the struggles we had today. But uh, we don't have the, the means to upgrade uh, an ultimate brake upgrade. Um, we just fell short on resource points on that one. So that will be the final upgrade we do, I feel like, on this car before we consolidate some upgrades. But after that, we should be all gravy for the rest of this season. But that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more racing game content. And until the next one, the Singapore Grand Prix. If I've got my timing right, I might have the Singapore Grand Prix career mode going live on, I don't know, either the Saturday or maybe even the Sunday of the actual Singapore Grand Prix. And I feel like that'd be uh, a nice timely video to schedule out. But that's it for me today. Until the next one. I'll see you next time. What is up guys, Ben here. Today we're here for a hot lap of Zuhai uh, on Project Cars 2, ahead of the eighth round of the US qualifiers here for the Logitech G Challenge. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. So here we go then for a hot lap of Zuhai. And if my pronunciation of that is wrong, you can blame Ara for that one. And here we are in a McLaren 650S, uh, GT3 McLaren. A lot of grip in these things, so you can afford to throw them around a bit. Heading into turn one, heavy braking zone. Oh, oh, lost it already. Through time one, we managed to catch it. A bit of oversteer. It's not too bad. This is actually my first lap on soft tyres. I was running around on hard slicks, so it should be a little bit easier to negotiate. Another heavy braking zone here, second gear. Shift down to first if you want to get some extra oomph out of the corner, uh, but sometimes it can bog down a little bit, so you'll need to watch out for that. A slight little kink here. Place the car to the left to give yourself optimal room for this uh, like double right-hander, kind of, hairpin corner. Hogging down on exit, which is not great, but we're three tenths up on our previous best, which is nice, uh, when you consider that I'm actually talking over the lap as well. But anyway, another heavy braking zone. Zuhai is full of these things, so if you're not good at your uh, modulating of the brake pedal, it's not gonna be that good for you. So having the Logitech gear definitely does help in 
spotting those braking zones and being very modular with the pedals, which is nice. But anyway, heading into the final couple of corners now, another heavy braking zone, first gear, try and rotate the car as much as you can early on the power and shifting up through the gears. Marginally ahead of our fastest lap, so that's still what you want. I think my previous best was a 36.1, so um, we'll be hoping to lower that into the 35s if we can now for the first fast corner of the lap. It's really exciting through there. Uh, carry a lot of speed and up to the line. That is a lap of Zuhai. Lap time is a 1.36.000. You couldn't script that. Right on the dot there. That is my hot lap of Zuhai on Project Cars 2 ahead of the eighth round of the US qualifiers. See if you can beat my time. If you can, there, may, there might be some Logitech gear heading your way, courtesy of Logitech and Veloce. But that's it for me today. Try out the challenge, send us a screenshot on socials, and I'll see you next time.